Hello, hope you're having a great day. My morning's going pretty well so far. I do seem to be moving through my morning routine quite slowly and my mind is definitely trying to drag me into future and past negativity, but um, not in any way that's going to overtake me. Now, this week is the week that my girlfriend Kat is doing her night shift. She doesn't do nights on a Monday, so she's gone to work in uh, days today, um, but she'll be doing night shift for the next four nights after today and if you've been watching my videos you'll know that when Kat does her night shifts that was when I used to go out and you know take loads of drugs and be a degenerate so you know it is a significant week in every month and it's inevitable that my mind is fantasizing about going to get high and uh, yeah living that life that I used to live although Today marks 300 days since I've been clean from drinking drugs, which is an awesome milestone. You know, I don't think I've done a 300 day streak for, well, certainly over a decade uh, before this one. So, um, yeah, really happy about that. And, yeah, you know, as I say, every month when Cat does do a night shift, it does give my mind an excuse to, you know, remind me of the fun I used to have. Um, yeah, ironically, it never reminds me of the uh, dark times that I used to have, you know, on a come down afterwards. You know, your mind always focuses on the reasons you should uh, go and take drugs. But um, yeah, as part of my recovery, I just accept what my mind's doing. You know, it's just a thought. It's not serving me. And I do myself a service of reminding myself of the bad times that follow, you know, the good times of uh, taking drugs. You know, I remind myself that, yeah, if I went out and got high, I would have to spend probably a week being depressed, feeling weak, you know, feeling ill. Um, so yeah, it's just, it's just not worth it. And um, yeah, I'm just grateful. I'm in a position now where it's not difficult for me to not go and take drugs, you know, whereas before it was impossible, you know, every month, at least once a month, I would go and get high when Kat was doing a night shift and then I would regret it and I'd be sure that I was never, ever going to do it again. But, you know, I always did at least that once a month when Kat was on nights and, you know, I went through phases where it was even worse than that and I was doing it every day at work, driving around in my van, you know, sniffing cocaine in my van and, uh, yeah, doing shameful things like, you know, as part of my job, I used to go into schools to collect mail and then, you know, I'd ask them if I could use the toilet. So, you know, I was going in toilets where kids, you know, use the toilet and taking drugs in there. So, yeah, shameful behaviour. So when my mind does try and fantasise about me going to get high, I have to then remind myself of, you know, how dark times can get when I am living that life where I'm getting high. Anyway, in terms of my morning, I woke up when Kat woke me up so that I could take her to work and so that I've got use of her car. And then I came back and sat on the sofa. I planned to sort of sit on the sofa until 8 a.m. and then get cracking with my routine, but I actually ended up sitting it till half eight. So that was uh, the first bit of getting through my routine slow, you could say. And um, after that, I got up and had a load of water and my salt water and my vitamin C. I did have a couple of glasses of water when I woke up, but you know, I like to have sort of five or six and some salt water and my vitamin C. So yeah, did that at half eight, then came back in here and uh, wrote in my journal, had my 10 minute meditation session, went for a walk around the block, which I was able to do at full speed. My foot seems a lot better today, but you know, it does fluctuate. So I'm not counting my chickens yet, but yeah, hopefully this is the start of it really starting to heal up now. And uh, yeah, once I got back from my walk, I've turned the camera on to speak to you guys as usual. Now, I've actually had a phone call from a company that's doing some modifications to some parts to one of my cars. So I do need to go and see them. But I want to crack on my exercises and my cold shower first. In terms of my exercises, I've been sitting here sort of trying to decide what exercises to do, which has given me another excuse to sort of stall on my um, morning routine. I'm on legs at the moment in the gym and I will be going to do a leg session today. But um, yeah, here at home, I think I'm just going to do push-ups, sit-ups, and I think I'll do some of these sort of things. I don't know what they're called, but um, yeah, let's get on with it. I've been listening to another podcast this morning from Ed Milet. Today, he's got a guy on called Dr. Lee, 
and they started off by talking about how some people are using injections nowadays to lose weight and uh, Ed Milet was saying how he's, you know, a few of his friends have started using these and how they don't look very healthy. You know, they're just injections that make you lose weight really quick, you know, a quick fix to obesity. And I've talked before on this channel out, I see, you know, any shortcut in anything, you know, to be not the way to go about it. There's always side effects to these quick fixes for things, right? But also, if you're the kind of person that achieves whatever you want to achieve through a quick fix, then you're not turning yourself into the kind of person that deserves the results of that fix, right? The whole point that, you know, having a great physique is valued so much is because it is so hard to achieve. Now, I know with, you know, your physique and stuff, there's steroids, but they still take hard work. I personally wouldn't touch steroids. I've mentioned before that if I'm going to take drugs, it's going to be cocaine. It won't be steroids. But um, yeah, you know, like an injection that makes you lose weight, it's just designed to interrupt your natural mechanisms in your body. So, you know, there's going to be sort of side effects. It's There's going to be downsides to it. So yeah, anything that's, you know, sort of a quick fix or, or a cheat, yeah, I'm, I'm wary of anything like that. But yeah, they're actually now gone on to talk about um, cancer. And I think they're going to get on to like a new discovery in terms of you know preventing or treating cancer. But yeah, they were explaining how basically all of us throughout our whole lives are constantly making little microscopic cancers. Like our cells have to, you know, copy and paste themselves billions of times you know all of our cells in our body are you know constantly dying off and getting remade so because that happens so often and so much there's always going to be slight defects and it's those defects that can potentially grow into you know full-blown cancer so yeah very very interesting stuff i'm going to carry on listening to this while i crack on with this workout All right, so after my cold shower earlier, I had to go to a local machine shop that's doing some work for me on some parts for one of the cars. I did actually get the call just after I started doing my exercises, and I was going to go before my cold shower, but I knew that if I did that, there'd be a, a high chance that when I got back, I wouldn't actually jump in my cold shower. So yeah, I decided to have my cold shower first, but I went to see them before I had my breakfast. Anyway, once I'd had my breakfast, I got some work done. I didn't want to do everything that I had to do just because, you know, it gets dark early now and, you know, it really limits how much time I've got to work around the garage on my car. So, um, yeah, done the bare minimum and then I went round to the garage and, um, yeah, I was trying to do a job that I've never done before. I've always got a specialist to do this particular job, but it's something that I've always fancied having a go at and um, I'm a trier at the end of the day. And yeah, I really struggled, basically down to a tool that I've had for years. Um, it's a DTI gauge, so it's like a gauge thing that measures um, very accurately, but it's got like a magnetic base, and basically it's not very magnetic anymore, and you need it to be perfectly still um, because it measures such you know small increments. So um, yeah, that was challenging, and um, yeah, the job I was trying to do is quite you know fiddly anyway, and you know you've got to be accurate. So that particular part of it, um, yeah, was really difficult, and I'm not a hundred percent confident that I've done it right. But you know, every day is a school day. Um, I do like to do things myself whenever I can. So not everything went to plan when I was around at the garage. I did plan to potentially do something other than this particular job, um, which didn't happen. It just got dark. But it is what it is. You know, I could feel myself getting stressed about the situation. But, you know, it was another situation where you know, I didn't actually get stressed. I could just feel it building in inside me, you know, in, in my mind and in my body. You know, emotions, you feel them, don't you, in your body as well as sort of see them in your mind. But, yeah, I was able to see it for what it was. And I just sort of persevered and, you know, kept trying to do this measuring, like, as it was getting dark, um, using a torchlight, um, so not the smoothest day around the garage, but it's all good. But, you know, one good thing about it getting dark early is that it's now 
only six o'clock and I've just made it to the gym. Uh, I decided that um, I may as well have my gym session before I go and pick Kat up from work, right? Because then it's going to free me up, you know, in the evening to, you know, chill out with Kat, but also chip away at editing the video that I'm working on at the moment um, on the car channel. And I remember saying to Kat before, you know, the way I live my life, I need to kind of have like a winter mode and a summer mode, right? Because it gets dark earlier in the winter months, I need to be prepared to try and get around the garage early i mean i didn't do that today but you know in an ideal world maybe do all the admin and stuff in the evening um and then get around the garage earlier so that i've got more time to actually work on the cars and part of that would be you know going to the gym earlier rather than going to the gym late at night you know maybe it's better to go to the gym at this time you know or even earlier you know it is going to gradually get dark earlier and earlier and then that kind of frees me up to do the admin stuff in the evening so um yeah, I've just made my way to the gym, as I say, and uh, yeah, I'm going to be banging out a leg session. Not looking forward to it, to be honest. You know, legs is intense. It is hard, but I know, as usual, I'll feel great once I actually get out of the gym. I've actually been watching this guy in America, Sam Sulek. Yeah, he's an absolute beast. Very young lad, clearly on steroids, but um, I'm not here to judge. Yeah, I'm guessing he's going to sort of, you know, become pro and all that. And yeah, I've been watching some of his training videos and one thing he sort of does all the time, I mean, I consider myself to go to failure on every set, right? But he will literally go past failure in a way, like where, you know, he's doing like partial reps, like until literally he can't move at all. So, you know, for instance, if he's doing like the pec fly, you know, you're going like this, like with both arms, and then it gets to the point where he can only go like this. And then, and then you know, it just gets to the point where he can't even move his arms. So, yeah, I'm going to try and incorporate that into my training. You know, go, go beyond failure, go to absolute failure. Now, I'm not going to count those reps, you know, when I sometimes put my reps and weights on the screen. I'm not going to count those as part of that. You know, they're, they're just extras, like they don't actually count. But, um, yeah, it's just a way of, you know, going to absolute failure because, you know, I'm getting used to going to the gym now. But, you know, if I'm going to continually get bigger and continually improve, then I need to keep pushing the boundaries, right? You know, obviously, every now and again, I'll go up in weight on the machines. But, yeah, I think this will be a, a really cool way of... Um, yeah, pushing the intensity up without actually going up a weight. So, uh, yeah, I need to get myself in the gym and uh, bang out this leg session. I'm going to start on the exercise bike for a warm up, of course, which actually mullers the legs <laughs> in itself. But uh, yeah, let's go and get this done. All right, so that was a pretty intense leg session. I did the full session apart from the hip adduction and hip abduction, which I don't do every time anyway. But yeah, basically when I was halfway through the leg curl, Kat texted me to say that she was ready to leave work. So yeah, just around the corner from Kat's work now. I'm gonna go and pick her up. But yeah, session was cool. You know, it's only recently that I sort of upped to weight on all uh, the leg machines. So, you know, right now, I'm not really making any progress. In, in fact, I'm sort of going up and down, up and down, uh, keeping the weight the same. But, you know, like today, um, one of the machines, for instance, where I can just about do 10 reps per set. Um, you know, I did the first set was 10. Then I think the second one was eight. And then the third one was eight or nine. So, yeah, sort of fluctuating in terms of how many reps I can do. But as I say, I have only recently um, gone up a weight on all the leg machines. So it's going to take a while before I can you know, consistently hit 10 reps on each set and then potentially go over 10 reps on each set, which means I can then start thinking about potentially raising the weight again at some point. But um, also warming up, you know, five miles on the exercise bike before a leg session, I think that um, sort of affects how much I'm able to do. But either way, feeling awesome as usual. Whenever I get out of the gym, I just feel awesome. I can't believe that I didn't start going to the gym until I was 37 years old. Like, anyway, 
I'm going to pick Kat up and then I'm going to go home for some well-deserved dinner. And um, yeah, I didn't have any lunch today, so I think I'm going to have a huge dinner. Plenty of protein. All right, as planned, I'm having a massive dinner. I've actually already had some prosciutto mozzarella as a starter. So yeah, having two monster Costco chicken breasts with two eggs and one of my super salads, protein yogurt for afterwards, and Kat's just brought in our smoothies that we have every day. Can't get big if you're not willing to eat big. Well, after my huge dinner earlier, I was feeling very full up and relaxed and tired. So I watched TV with Kat for a bit, but when she went to bed, I did dive into some more work, but it's now 12 minutes past midnight. So I want to go to bed and have a decent night's sleep and make sure that I get up early tomorrow. Tomorrow, Kat is off work in the day, but she'll be doing her night shift. So because it's her night shift week, I need to keep on the ball with, um, you know, listening to what my mind's doing and not getting drawn into what my mind's doing. But I've got plenty to uh, keep me occupied anyway with work and working on the cars and stuff. And yeah, hopefully I'll be able to uh, actually go to the gym with Kat. But um, if it's not looking lightly, then I'm just going to tell her to go on her own. I don't want to be holding her up for her gym session, especially when she's got to get everything done and uh, get herself to work for a night shift. But yeah, today's been another cool day. It's definitely starting to feel like there's even less hours in the day to get stuff done just because it's getting dark early. So, you know, I need to maybe start rearranging my days so that, you know, I get round to the garage earlier, maybe save some of the at home work um, until the evenings. But um, yeah, I'll figure it out. The main thing is I'm staying positive. I'm staying busy and I'm staying productive. But yeah, I'm gonna end this video. Massive thanks to everyone who's tuned in. As always, feel free to say hello in the comments and we'll have a chat or get in touch through the usual channels. All the links to everything will be in the description. But other than that, I'll speak to you tomorrow.